Jackie Rogers, the founder of Smoke Enders here in New York. We did something with this organization on the local news program. And one of our correspondents, Norma Quarles, was very, very successful in ridding herself of the habit. And he or she herself, Ms. Rogers, was a compulsive smoker for over 20 years, about 22 years, and I trust you are now off the evil weed. Free. You have ended. She is free. See, that's the old key word. I'm yes. still a slave. You're still free. How did you quit? Oh, it's a, such a story. I, I quit for 17 years, steadily, on and off. Every, every night way. when you went to bed. Every right? night when I, <laughs> every night when I, I go to bed. I'm not going to smoke anymore tomorrow. I'm not going to smoke. I wake up in the morning and think, what is this important thing I'm not going to do today? Well, I'll have a cigarette and think about it because I couldn't think about a cigarette. <laughs> Uh, but my husband was very much part of this. He was very much, un very unhappy because I smoked. He was a young dental student when I met him, and he began from the very moment we were married, practically, to try to teach me all the good, rational reasons why I should not smoke. And he explained the physiology and the pathology of smoking, and so I tried to quit, repeatedly, off and on, on and off, for 17 years. I tried everything. I tried playing games with myself. I was very ingenious. I had devices to quit smoking you wouldn't believe. And I had, and I tried all of the local cancer society programs and the five-day thing, and I tried a few of the covert sensitization things myself. I, everything that came along, I read every book, and I would quit for a day or a week or a month, sometimes for two months. But I would be so miserable, so absolutely miserable without a cigarette that I felt life wasn't worth bothering with while I wasn't smoking. Up until tonight, I've never met anybody who quit who said, I still, who has not said, I still crave them. Well, I don't, Tom. Don't and you I'll really? tell and you I why. Don't, I, I was so miserable no, without a cigarette no. that I felt finally that I simply couldn't live without a cigarette and that it was hopeless. And my husband and children were very distressed. And finally one day, about 10 years ago, John, my husband, said, Jackie, you've got to find a way. I had tried, finally I tried a psychiatrist and I had gone to hypnosis and so on. All very unsuccessful for me. And he, I said, but how can I do it, John? I've tried everything. I surrender. I give up. I'm tired of quitting. I'm emotionally exhausted from quitting. And I feel like I'm not worth very much anyhow. My willpower must, I must have really willpower. Really stink. Stink. I just had no regard for myself. So he said, Jackie, you've solved other problems. You've got to find the way for yourself. You've looked to the experts. There aren't any for you. You go back to the books. You find out about this madness, and you solve the problem for yourself. So I had a year's sabbatical <laughs> from house work and children and uh, things like that. The children took care of things, and my husband did. And I researched it, and I looked into it, and I found all the mythology. It's a lot of baloney that they tell us. We smokers have had one of the greatest snow jobs about what the smoking problem really is, and that it is a nasty little habit that's dependent upon your willpower and your marvelous intellect, and all that sort of thing. It isn't. It isn't that at all. It's a very complicated problem that needs a very interesting and complicated solution. So I put all the things together that I knew I needed in order to break every part of the habit. I found 138 different elements that the smoking habit is, and I listed them, and I decided how I could treat each one of those for myself to break it, a conditioned response, or a need for oral gratification, or fatigue when I needed a pickup, or the social encounters, because I didn't think enough of myself to think that I could talk to someone like you without a cigarette. So I took them, and I lined them up, and I planned something for and each one of those things. dealt with each one things. in turn. Huh? And I put them in a long frame, because Dr. William James, uh, the psychologist, said it takes six weeks to learn or unlearn a new habit. I stretched it out, and I required that I continue to smoke during all of this while I broke the habit and gained control of it. Because the end result I wanted, Tom, was not to feel rotten and lousy and to resent life and that I was being deprived, but I wanted to feel free. I wanted to walk away from this thing and feel like I've added something to my life. And I did it, and I was so astonished when I came to my cutoff date. I was so surprised that I didn't have this nagging, compulsive desire for a cigarette. Everything I did used to have this I was free. I really physically and emotionally felt free. And I thought, this is unbelievable. It's unreal. The world really is so clean and so clear and so fresh. And I don't Isn't need it to though? smoke. Isn't it, though, nice and fresh in here? <laughs> well, it's delicious. It, it has a different look when you stop smoking. Sure does. All right. And I that was, it was...
need a method. Yeah. It's a very complicated thing. It's not just a nasty 